You need help? You need help? You need help, brother? Good outdoor morning, everybody. That is how you get a fire going. Goodness, I need to share with you the truth of life. I've unlocked one of the main secrets. I have a hard time sleeping in the outdoors sometimes. You gotta find flat ground. That's one of the, one, the key things. Have a good pad. I got those two things, and then I have figured out the other element that made me sleep like a bear in hibernation, y'all. Just got up about 10 minutes ago. We're about to get our coffee going and all that. The river has dropped, it's all good news, but the, the best news ever, okay? I got one of these things for Christmas. If you haven't seen them, you gotta, you gotta get yourself one of these things. And you're a, a roller sleeper like me. I twist all around a gravity blanket, y'all. This thing is, it's heavy. Let me turn this up for you so you can see. Let me get a little grainy. This blanket weighs 14 pounds. It's filled with beads, either glass beads or I don't, I don't know. But it is very heavy. And you lay this thing out on top of the sleeping bag. I got a zero degree and it came in handy. I mean, it was perfect. It's 32, 33 degrees. Got inside of here on top of the pad and then laid this over, prevented all, all the, you know, the draftiness and all of that. I didn't move for six hours. It was amazing. I got mine as a gift for Christmas, but worth every penny, I would say. It isn't raining. It's not gonna rain. We just have some overcast conditions. The river has dropped significantly. Now, if you guys watched the last video where it was, it was really tough, was tough conditions. We were just kind of getting up here, setting up camp, and trying to see what was going on. I showed you guys a rock that was growing inside of a tree. Actually, the rock, the tree itself was like growing on top of the rock and the water is now sitting over here and just a little trickle, a little side stream. And what we're hoping for is the water out there is gonna be much cleaner. This is definitely one of those mornings you wanna make yourself a fat cup of joe. We'll be using the pour over method this morning and you just take your, your favorite cup, set it on top, pour your hot water over your grounds. And I like to keep my grounds in this thing, this coffee gator, to keep them fresh and tasty. Those are a little stale, to be honest with you. <laughs> They're from my last trip, Colorado probably. There's really not a hurry all to get out there and start whipping around the rod. It still looks kind of brown. We're gonna figure out a way to catch them today. And, and I think the best bite is gonna be in the afternoon once the, uh, the water flow slows down. That's still a problem. We're gonna figure it out today. And I've got three different rods that I'm gonna deploy, three different techniques. But already in this video, two keys you've learned. Get yourself a weighted blanket if you're gonna be sleeping in the deep woods, get yourself a good cup of coffee. That'll, that'll override a bad night's sleep any day. Oh, it's time to dangle, y'all. It's time to dangle. I'm gonna break out the straight up eight foot crappie fishing jig and pole. This one right here, and I'm just gonna put some, some power bait on it and let it sit, you know, do the catfish type method. I don't wanna do that. I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but I like casting the targets, getting that lure in the correct spot, and when you get it in the right spot and that fish goes, boom! It's a good feeling that you did your job right. Well, if you have a spoon, though, probably gold's fine. Buddy Lance, I, I gotta get this fishing report from a man that looks so dialed in his gear. Hey, if you can't catch anything, <laughs> you gotta look good. Dude, I mean, you're from the boots to the top. You got it going on. 
like base. It's like the old baseball saying: "You gotta look good. You look good. You play good. You look good. You might catch. You might catch something. <laughs> you might. You might. I'm digging this pack, dude. The pack looks great. You could fit a lot of stuff in there. Dude, you even got a drying agent for your flies. Yeah. Look at you. What kind of dangle pole you got going on here? I'm fishing a seven six fiberglass three weight. Three way. Three way. Let me see that. Let me see the whip. Let me see the action on that thing. <laughs> God, look at that tip. The fiberglass is going to bend a lot more than your. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that'll, that'll get him excited. Well, that's going to be a fun fight. You can catch a four inch or that'll be a good fight. That's the key, man. Man, it's. It's come down, but it's still muddy. It's a little sketchy. Okay, we're uh, we got a little team here, father-son teams. Buddy Lance has got his dad and father-in-law here. We're gonna kind of fish some of the same areas, a little different pools, and then just communicate and see what's what's working and what's not. Starting out with uh, inline spinner. It's got a white blade on it. Got a little rock there. Definitely getting caught on the rocks. I don't have that many inline spinners. I need this one. Looks like we're not gonna be able to get it. Dad gummit. Didn't last long. I'm gonna try crossing these waters. It's strong. I'm gonna tell you what. This is kind of scary. I mean look. Look at that. amazing the power of water basically pointing my feet towards the water so there's less resistance just side shuffling I'm using my rod it's kind of a brace and a test depth tester depth finder Woo! Daggum. so you get behind this rock right here and the current stops that's where the fish are gonna be sitting that's the key there's some slippery parts right here. Not the best. Gosh dang, that's slippery right there. Shoo! This is taking me forever to cross. I'm trying to be uber careful. It's moving right here. This is a high mover. High mover right here. Almost to safety. My goodness. Wow. That is strong to the very end. Woo -wee. Thank you, Lord. Another river crossing. That's a, like a beaver dam situation. I'm trying to get out to this little island where I think the fish are gonna be. Now this is a perfect spot for my little technique. Wow, already got it hung up. Somehow. Look right here, somebody else's lure. <laughs> eggs, fake eggs. That's what they're using right there. We'll keep that aside. A little deep right here. Okay. Yep, that is very deep right there. My 12 foot pole is also acting as my my 12 foot pole is also acting as my stick. I'm gonna sit here and untie this knot and hopefully the GoPro will capture you falling in. We'll get a million views. Move back here. Oh yeah, it's deep on that side. It's a tricky wicket out here right now, y'all. The only thing I've seen work so far is people throwing power bait. Just with some split shots, just letting it hang there on the bottom, basically catfishing the thing I did not want to do. This technique, I love it. The water's just not clear enough. It's looking like we're gonna have to go with the old local technique. I think I'm literally gonna just tie this thing on right here. Look at that. Didn't want to do it, but I think we're gonna have to. Lance hooked up.
You need help? You need help? You need help, brother? Oh, you got him. Yeah. Dude, that's a big rainbow. Yeah. That's a nice one, dude. Oh my gosh, first fish on the power bait. Let me get in your spot. <laughs> dude, he was, uh, those nibbles are there that I was hearing? That, no. I swear. Where, really? Yeah. Oh, he swallowed it. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's what it is. It's the nibbles. First fish, y'all. Gosh. Hey, it took, it took two days. <laughs> we, we're right, we're just right behind our camp right now. This stuff stinks. It smells like garlic. It floats. It would probably survive a nuclear disaster. Babe, come on, big trout. Oh, dude, I got a bite. First fish, got him. Oh, came off. I told you. I told you. Wow, you weren't lying. I don't lie. I don't lie when I'm trying to throw something. <laughs> okay, my first, my first bite it's like with. A, it's like a bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, yeah. No, I had him. I had him for a second. Okay, this, this is something new for me, y'all. This floating paste. Garlic. Why do they like it? I don't know. But I'm telling you, I've been fishing eight hours and that was my first bite. So, it felt like a little one, but you never know. Letting that scent carry in the current. Oh, he's got it. I got, oh no, dude, I lost him. Dude, they're smoking this thing. That was 100%, like you can tell the difference. You can really tell the difference in the in the rocks versus the bites. Yeah, it's a bump, 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 bump. Got you on your toes now, huh? Yeah, now I'm ready. Oh, dude, another one jumped. I lost him, dude. Hey, hey look, I'm going, I'm going big ball this time. Keep, dude, I just lost one. Give me, give me another one. I just put it in the rod holder, son. Yeah, I know. That, I, honestly, it's kind of probably better to look at the rod tip, you know? Yeah, when he started tapping it. Yeah. That was a little one, though, huh? Yeah, I had I had him rigged up in the rod holder. By rod holder, I mean the stick right here. I just happened to look down, and he was giving it a good tap. Oh, get the bite. Folks at home, first trout. Here we go. My GoPro battery died. I had it on a, a floating egg that I found. I'm just having trouble getting them in is the problem. I got one little tiny fish. It's just so not the way I wanted to be fishing, but I can't get bit on anything else. Come on, baby. Oh, he's tapping it. Let him, let him take it. He's tapping it, dude. Let him eat it or jerk it. Ah, I lost it. Dang, man. Look at this tiny little hook, y'all. Tiny. That last one, I, I just, I let him, you know, let him eat it. I thought that guy was going to eat it, but he just kept toying with it. Well, folks, it's been a long, hard fought battle today. I've tried all the techniques. At the end of the day, it came down to just sitting on the bank putting you a little stanky bait on there and just watching the rod tip. Not the way I wanted it to turn out, but I did end up getting one. I lost a good one and I got this little tiny situation. Probably one of the smaller trout that I've ever caught, but hey, guess what? They all die in the summer and they all need to hit the frying pan anyway. That's why they stock them in here. I was with my buddy Flair the other day. He suggested this, brought this up. He said, everybody's doing this thing where they're cooking on rocks and I was like I want to see if it's an actual viable source like if I'm camping somewhere like this that has a bunch of rocks and has some good flat rocks like this place does is this a viable way to cook your fish I personally don't think you can beat a skillet but we're gonna take our little rainbow friend here pop him up on a hot rock sizzle him and see what he tastes like see if it can be done really it's really can it be done with the rock got a little fire burning for continual heat but what we're gonna do is take our extremely hot rock that is sitting over here in uh, the big fire right now we're gonna take that out with some tongs set that over there and hopefully this guy just starts 
sizzling. It's probably hot enough now, so I got a decent little fire going over here. I'm gonna grab this hot rock with some tongs, set it on top of these two pieces of wood with the fire burning underneath. We're just gonna see how this goes. This is about as primitive cooking as you can get. No tin foil, no spices, no butter. God, I'm gonna miss the butter. No olive oil, no lubrications, no, no tasties, nothing but the trout. I might even eat it with this axe. At least it's a small one. I don't have like a huge one to cook through. You know, it's a good thing I caught a tiny fish today. It's about the only time you can say that. Oh, that's a toasty one there. Oh, ashy. Okay, our rock is broken a little bit from the heat, but still be good. Oh yeah, that's it. Nice blackened area. That's it. Okay, let's grab our fish. All right, a little bit of truce. Not right. much of a sizzle happening it, there. It did sizzle a little bit. It's, it's starting to. It's, if we were in there, I guess this would have popped. Do you have the other one? The rock just exploded again. I thought I got hit with the grenade. The fish is still intact. He's not exploded. Oh, you're, the rock's Yeah, the rock's look at the destroyed. edge of the rock. I think it's still fairly hot. I mean, it's not sizzling, but uh, I can see the skin is starting to shrink up a little bit, so that's an indicator it's cooking. I'll be able to see the meat when it turns white, if it turns white. I might be eating some sushi here, y'all. Safety note, if you're gonna do this, maybe wear some goggles or some sunglasses. Oh, look, the skin is sticking to the rock. So that means it's cooking. It's definitely sticking to the rock, so. I'll move the trout to the edge of the rock so it'd get a little bit more exposure. I don't want it to burn the edges. So far, thoughts on this as a viable way uh, to cook your fish. The skin is sticking because it's hot and it's just, there's no, you know, there's no butter, there's no oil. I've never just thrown a fish on a hot pan like that with no butter. It's going to stick. Um, the juices are coming out, so that means that it's cooking. I can see it sizzling. Making the fish the best it can be? No, this is not it. But man, if I was stuck on an island or something and surrounded by fish and I had no ingredients or anything, I just had rocks and I had trout, definitely, definitely a way to cook the fish effectively. Probably another way to cook it that would be better that I should try sometime is cooking it on a stick. Like actually using the smoke and, and setting it higher above the fire you know, it would take longer, but you put it up here, like rotisserie style, that would be another way. I'm going to attempt to flip my fish. Uh, definitely sticky. Definitely sticky. Oh, my God, that's hot right there. Oh, okay. That definitely cooked. Here we go, right here. We're getting the moss. Everything from the rock, the natural nutrients, minerals. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. Got a little bit of that, uh, you know, grit to it. There's another piece right here. Zoom in so you all can see that. Brighten it up. Bop, bop, bam. Manual shooting, like button. There it is. Straight up on the rock. Fish on an axe, y'all. Primitive fire, primitive cooking. Go ahead and smash it. Mm. 
Mm. If you've ever eaten like a um, like a shellfish that's got a little grit to it, uh, uh, that's kind of how how it is. There's like grit off the rock. It's not terrible. And I had this thing scorching in the fire, so anything that was on there living, it burned off. Oh wow, it's actually falling out of the bone. I want to want to show you guys this. This is actually how you can tell when a fish is cooked. When you grab that that spine and you can pull up on it and it's it's falling out of there quite easily. Um, that's when you know it's cooked. So I mean this this whole side I know is done. I was really worried about it cooking, but this a hundred percent works, y'all. Hundred percent. This has probably been uh, ten minutes of cooking. Whereas like a normal trout this size, I could probably get done in five. When I'm in control of the heat. But man, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh heck yeah. Oh my gosh. This works a lot better than I expected it to. So if y'all want to try this for yourselves, you just gotta find a good rock that the problem is I picked this out of the river, had a lot of moisture in it. It can it can absolutely blow up on you with all the heat. The water inside expands so just be careful of that I stuck the rock in the fire a big burning fire for 10 minutes I think that really helped now if I just started the fire and I put the coal rock on top um, I think it would it would take a significantly long longer time perfectly cooked ladies and gentlemen I'm just gonna show you this one last bite because I'm, I'm proud of this one check that out that is tasty and actually, I, I use olive oil on this axe. This is my, uh, my woodsman axe. It's a really nice axe. I use olive oil for the wood and to keep the, the metal um, nice and lubricated and not rusting. So, already had olive oil on it, ready to go. Never thought I'd be eating a fish with it. All right, let's get you all focused in here and we'll shut her down. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, the fishing has been tough. It has been a journey uh, to try to catch these fish. I am hoping tomorrow morning we're going to have some better water clarity, but at least we figured out a way to catch them in the absolute worst circumstances. And we figured out that you can cook these fish on a rock. And I got to say, that's pretty good with no spices or anything on it. That's not bad. But as always, thank you guys for staying tuned with me, especially on these outdoor adventures. I love taking you guys along. God bless you. Go ahead and smash that like button for outdoor greatness. And I'll see you back here at the river in the morning. Come on.